This is the story of Steve Trillia and his attempt at a world record-breaking stunt that will make a car do something you have never seen before. The concept that keeps coming up on this journey is that of G-forces. That's something I'm going to have to get used to if I'm going to pull this stunt off. I've thought of a way of doing that, and that's tracking down an old friend of mine I've done some stunts with in the past. But I'm not looking forward to it. This is an Extra 300, a 190,000 pound stunt plane capable of pulling 10 G. Mark Greenfield is a crack pilot in the ultimate high display team. He's XRAF and a former global head of credit risk for a merchant bank. With some two and a half thousand flying hours under his belt, Greeners has agreed to get Steve used to the kind of forces he'll experience in the loop, Top Gun style. You want know to wear all this underneath it, do you? Uh, you don't have to, you can take your trousers off you the Yeah, yeah. probably won't do that on camera, because I'm commando. <laughs> Kitchen. <laughs> Too much information, right? Typically, people are comfortable up to about four, four and a half G, uh, and I think it's that level that we're going to practice today. You've got a pump here, which is your heart, and it's working really, really hard to keep blood up here as well as blood down here. When we pull positive G, that's effectively going to pull the blood towards the lower half of the body, which starves your head of oxygen. OK, and when your head starves of oxygen, that's a bad thing. First thing that'll happen is you lose your sight, OK, and then after a while, if you continue the sustained G, then you'll actually lose consciousness as well and go to sleep. Okay. Now, one of the things that we'll look at today is bracing your body so that you're prepared for that impact, you're prepared for your body to have that reaction and you won't actually go to sleep. Because I'm guessing that if you go to sleep as you go into this manoeuvre, it's not going to be good. Basically, to prepare for it, you want to minimise the blood transport capability in the lower half of your body. To do that, to constrict the arteries and the veins, you've got to tense all of your muscles, your stomach, your bum, your thighs, your calves, and you've got to stress them. It's, without being indelicate, it's like if you're constipated, you're trying really okay. hard to take a poo, and if you actually make the grunting noise, I'm not kidding now, this is, if you make the grunting noise, it helps. So kind of like a like this, and tensing the lower half of your body at the same time. I thought I'd be apprehensive about this because I suffer from motion sickness quite a lot. Yeah, I've known Greeners for quite a long time, but I've never actually flown with him. And I know he's kind of a crazy guy, so uh, there's a little bit of trepidation there. We'll see what comes. I'm looking forward to it in a strange, perverse sort of way. was extraordinary. I mean, the first really steep incline jeep just blew me away. I wasn't expecting it and I almost lost consciousness. In fact, there's a couple of seconds I can't account for. So uh, that was pretty, uh, pretty intense. OK, one, two, three, break. <laughs> OK, that was five jeeps. Now, I felt myself tensing up. You know, I don't just expect it's not my face. I didn't really know what was going to happen, and uh, I instinctively felt myself tensing up there, to, and I coped a lot better. I remained more aware of what was going on. Just feeling a little bit queasy now, Mark. I'm starting to feel a bit of motion sickness kicking in, but it's very, very slight. We went into the uh, snap manoeuvres at about 200 miles an hour. 
the first one we did, I deliberately didn't give Steve any warning whatsoever. So we were, I think we were verging on sleepy time on the first one. <laughs> um, but uh, with practice, we worked on the sustained G turns. And uh, it was very clear that Steve was starting to automatically tense the lower half of his body, almost without having to think about it. But Steve had still only experienced a fraction of the aircraft's capabilities, given it has 300 horsepower and lightweight carbon fiber wings. And seeing as this airfield is the former home of the Red Arrows, it seemed only fitting to subject Steve to a second session with the pace cranked right up. It's unbelievable! I don't know where's up and where's down anymore. <laughs> where are you? You're still there. There oh, I am. Fantastic! On this yeah, okay. well, it's not too bad, not too bad. No! What? <laughs> no! No! Where are we? Oh my god! I felt all the blood rushing out of my head. How many G's was that, Mark? You really want to know? Come on. Seven and a half. That was seven and a half G's. Incredible! I was tensing everything, even my toenails. <laughs> Boy, he did absolutely fantastically. Very, very awake, very aware, and I think pretty, pretty pleased with himself as well. And that was that was a big pull. Most people will really struggle uh, with that kind of G, but uh, he stayed in the game and did very well. If I hadn't have done today, and I went straight into the loop on the car stunt and pulled 4G, I would have felt like I did on the first takeoff 4G. I completely lost it for a couple of seconds. So it would have been in the lap of the gods. I wouldn't have been steering. God knows what would have happened. So in terms of the stunt, this has been really, really good experience. I feel I can control G now, 7.4 I handled to some degree. 6G felt pretty good as well. So uh, this has been great preparation. I'm glad, really Everyone glad. Everyone who'd helped Steve along the way agreed. This stunt wouldn't just require their brains, but a lot of his bottle too. I would love to try, but I would be probably taken out. I wish him the very best. I'm just glad he's the test pilot on this one and not me. I'm very happy to have helped in, uh, in whatever way I can, but I don't want to do it myself. So take a moment to savour the world record for driving a car around the largest loop the loop. Chances are you'll never see it executed so perfectly again. Now that was amazing, and as they say in all good shows, don't be trying that at home. Next, more death-defying moments, all in a day's work for the oil riggers.